In my last two videos, I showed off these modular structural shop cabinets. These can be stacked and reconfigured in different ways to build workbenches and stuff. And in both of those videos, I showed off this drawer. This drawer is full of these little cardboard hardware boxes. I made these myself, and a lot of people in those videos were interested in them, so in this video I'm going to show you how I made them. This ought to be a good source of cardboard. This cardboard is about four millimeters thick, which is what I've been using for all of my hardware boxes. That's pretty standard shipping box material. I'll be cutting out the boxes using an X-Acto knife. And for a repeatable shape, I made this template. Took about five tries or so, trial and error, to find the right shape. But now that I have it, I can make them repeatably. This scrap of heavy stuff will help keep the template from moving around while I'm trying to cut it. For now, I'm just scoring these cuts, and I'll get the template out of the way and then cut all the way through. I found that to be a bit easier. If you have a laser cutter, this would obviously be the place to use that. I don't have or want a laser cutter, so I'm using a knife. These take about a minute and a half to two minutes to cut out by hand. As you can see, I'm just batching out a ton of these at once. Now we need to turn this into this, and to do that, I made this little form that goes inside the box. So this is cut to the inside dimensions of the box. It has this relief on this side, which is for the flap on the inside of the box. And then it has these two holes to be able to pull it out of the finished box. I like to start by creasing the corners exactly at the spot where I want them to bend. If I don't do this, sometimes they tend to crease at the wrong place. You may have noticed when I cut out the template that these two flaps are a little bit taller than these two. When it comes to folding it up, the reason for that is the longer flaps are actually going to fold over the shorter flaps. So they need to go up a little bit more before they fold in, and that means they need to be longer in order to still touch in the middle. So what that means for folding this is we need to put the crease at a slightly different position for the longer flaps than for the shorter flaps. So I'm going to start by pushing the block up a little bit and creasing the longer flaps at the right spot, and then I'll slide it back down and fold the lower flaps where I want them. If I don't do this and both flaps are folded at the same place, the longer flap ends up kind of not wanting to fold all the way over the shorter one, and so the bottom of the box will end up curved and it won't sit flat. So I'll put a scrap of the same cardboard underneath and then push the box down so this is pushing the form up in the box a little bit, and then I fold the longer flaps in. And I'm just trying to create a crease here. That's all I'm doing for now. Fold them back out of the way. Get that out of the way and push the form back down, and now we can fold the shorter flaps in. So the crease will be one cardboard thickness lower on the shorter flaps. And that's it. So about this drill press step, there are a few things I want to say. 
First of all, of course, if you have an actual press, you don't need to use a drill press, but drill press works fine. Just retract the jaws into the chuck so you're pressing directly on the face. Also, I'm pressing against a heat sink here. Any sort of big block of metal will be fine, but if you put down something that has really good thermal conductivity, like aluminum, then that means you don't need to press for as long because it'll suck the heat out of the hot glue. Also, I'm crushing the corrugations by doing this, and that is intentional. It might seem like a bad thing, but for the bottom of this box, it's supported all the way around, so it doesn't really need the strength of the corrugations. All they're doing is taking up extra space. So by crushing them flat, I'm increasing the usable volume inside the box with no real downside. Previously, I was doing this step by hand before I thought to use the drill press, but I can't recommend that because it's hard on the wrists. I did try 3D printing a few of these boxes, but this box takes three hours and 28 minutes to print and costs a dollar and 93 cents. So to completely fill this drawer with these boxes would cost almost $30 and take about 53 hours of total printing. And for comparison, this is practically free, maybe like 50 cents worth of hot glue for the entire drawer full of boxes. It will probably take an hour to make one drawer full, and of course that is my own time instead of a robot's time, but I just don't think it's worth it to spend the money, and also the new plastic. I don't want to waste that much new plastic on something when I could make it out of literal garbage. The plastic boxes are better in some ways, like having thinner walls and bottom, but they're also not quite as strong. They're a lot more squishy. These are much sturdier. The plastic one could of course be made sturdier, but that's gonna make it even more expensive and take even longer to print. I think this is a bit of a matter of priorities because for me, I would rather spend time directly doing stuff with my hands that I kind of enjoy doing and not spending any money and not wasting any plastic. If you're interested in making some of these cardboard boxes yourself, I did put together a little PDF plan to help walk you through it and also give you all of the dimensions. So if you want that, there's a link in the description to where you can get it from my website for free. I think that's it. Thanks for watching.